beach house and they're really rough and nothing's working, but there's something inside of you that says, I just have to follow that because you don't know. Welcome to the Bench on Selvaf podcast. My name is Anna, but you can call me Anshi, and thank you so much for tuning in. Bench on Selvaf podcast is about navigating binge eating disorder struggles, disordered eating, and negative body image. Although I share my personal experience with having a negative body image, eating disorders, and I do uncover bits of my personal story, this podcast is not as much about me as it is about you beautiful human beings who struggle, who fight, who grow, and who evolve every single day. This podcast is for anyone who wants to feel supported on their recovery journey and simply for anyone who's trying to improve their relationship with themselves. I believe together we can turn something so negative, such as binge eating, into something more positive and hopefully go from binging on food and self-hatred to binging on self-love. Subscribe to the Binge on Selva podcast on your favorite platform and tune in every Tuesday for a new episode. But there's something inside of you that says, I just have to follow that because you don't know. Disclaimer, Bench on Selva podcast is intended for informational purposes only. It doesn't provide professional medical advice and it is not a substitute for diagnosis or treatment. In this podcast, we cover the topic of eating disorders, so if you find this topic triggering, it may be better for you not to listen to this podcast. Always make sure to put your mental health first. Hello, my dear listeners. My name is Anna, but you can call me Anchi, and welcome to the Bench on Selvaf podcast. Happy Tuesday. I hope you all have a great week so far. If you are new here, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you've never listened to the Bench on Selvaf podcast before, then please know that Bench on Selvaf is a podcast where we discuss self-acceptance, self-love, bad image, but also things like eating disorder and the process of recovery and of building a healthier and happier relationship with your body and yourself. Bench on Selvaf is a platform where everyone and anyone is welcome. If you are interested in more content, then definitely hit that subscribe button. It doesn't matter whether you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any other platform. By subscribing, you'll be notified when a new episode comes out. Recording today's episode, I hope to open a discussion about body image and eating disorders at universities and colleges. For me personally, the uni period was one of the most challenging times of my life in terms of self-acceptance and in terms of my body image and my mental health. And today, there are millions and millions of university students who also may be struggling with disordered body image, with body dysmorphia, with disordered eating, or even with an eating disorder. The transition from living at home comfortably with your family to moving to a different city or even to a different country to become a full-time uni student is a challenge in and of itself let alone if you're fighting with yourself at the same time. It's funny and sad at the same time that we can take courses and lectures and classes to prepare ourselves for the exams, but there are no classes or lessons that would teach us how to accept our bodies without the desire to change it. No classes are going to prepare you and your mental health for how challenging and hard it all can get, especially if you struggle with something so fundamental and with something so many others take for granted, like accepting yourself and your body. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode. As you will probably be able to tell, the topic I'll cover today is a bit difficult for me because I don't necessarily have the happiest memories of me being at the uni and that six year long period of my life in general and I'll explain why a little later. If you've ever went to college or uni, I think we can all agree that it brings a lot of changes in all aspects and in all areas of your life. It's a transition between being a full-time high school student, living at home with your family, 
often still being treated like a kid in so many ways by your parents and between living on your own for the very first time, becoming fully responsible for yourself, not just for your academic performance, but for basic things like doing all shopping, doing laundry, eating, making all of the appointments, creating your own schedule, paying bills on time, making money, and all of that stuff that maybe you were used to do in the past as well, but for many of us, we did get help from our parents. But you know, there's suddenly no one no one else there, and you are the only one responsible for all of that. Plus, you now add more things to the list, like getting an internship, getting a job, meeting new people, discovering what college life has to offer, studying for exam, participating in extracurricular activities, all while trying to figure out who you want to be, what do you want to do with your life, and what direction you want to go. And on top of that, imagine struggling with your bad image, or with an eating disorder, or Imagine trying to recover from one at the university. Studying at the university is a pretty challenging and stressful experience in and of itself, which creates the perfect conditions for self-doubt. And if you have an eating disorder, then it creates the perfect environment for the eating disorder to thrive. You may be thinking, what does college and eating disorder have in common? Well, I'm not saying that studying university will cause you to have an eating disorder, of course not, but what I'm saying is that it's indeed a perfect environment for self-doubt, for stress, for creating a negative narrative about yourself, about your capabilities, about your performance compared to other students, and also maybe even about the way you look. According to childmind.org article from 2022, between 10 to 20 percent of women and 4 to 10 percent of men in university or college suffer from an eating disorder. So as you can see, it is not just some rare issue that wouldn't deserve attention. It's also important to emphasize that it's not only girls and women who struggle with an eating disorder in college, but men and gender minority students as well, and I think that's often overlooked. When we speak about eating disorders, we often associate them with girls and women. Yes, they are majority when it comes to eating disorders, but they are not the only ones who struggle with body image or with an eating disorder, and they are not the only ones who, sh- who deserve the attention and the help. So what really is that different about uni? Well, there are plenty of things that change. For example, you have both freedom and responsibility when it comes to food. You're doing food shopping for yourself, no one is telling you what to eat, when to eat it, no one's cooking for you, no one's checking on you, whether you ate your breakfast, whether you've been eating out every night, etc. Plus, due to a busy schedule, it can become challenging to make sure that in between classes, studying and all of those other activities, you make time to eat. Number two, brand new environment, which can be a great thing, but also intimidating and scary at the same time. You're moving in with somebody you don't know, you have to meet new classmates, new teachers, you are most likely making new friends, and if meeting new people is not really your thing, it can be a little daunting. Number three, discovering and learning more about yourself, who you are, what your values are, what do you want to do in life, what dreams you want to pursue, etc. Number four, losing all habits and routines and creating new ones, which again can be a little difficult. You've been used to living your life in a certain way for years and years and now everything's different and you have to figure out a way how to deal with it. One of the most difficult factors when going to a uni that's far from where you live is leaving your family and friends and sometimes even your partners behind and trying to balance your relationships at home while also trying to make new connections at a new school. Number six, tons and tons of stress, not just from studying, but also running around the campus and in between the buildings trying to make it on time. Then there's the stress from exams and studying for exams, the stress of not knowing anything and anyone, especially during your first year, etc. 
Number seven, the pressure to succeed. University is a lot more about self-studying and about the commitment. And we all want to perform well. And we all want to be great students. We want to be just as good as our peers, if not better. While also prove our parents and families and friends that we can do it, that we made the right decision to go to the uni. So that's another extra layer of stress on top of everything. Number eight, college for a lot of people can also be about trying new things, trying to change some habits about themselves. And speaking from my own experience, it can seem tempting to try to lose weight or to hop on a new diet or something like that because you feel like for the first time in your life no one is telling you what to do and what to eat so you think maybe trying a diet can be a good idea but side note it never is a good idea number nine it's the social factor when going to a uni you are in a completely new environment you're among all these new people and You want to feel like you fit in somewhere. We all want that. We all want to make friends and new connections. But at the same time, we start to doubt about ourselves. We are not sure if we deserve to be there in the first place. If we have what it takes. And so the social comparison kicks in. You see people that are really good at class, people that seem to juggle gazillion things at the same time with such an ease. So you start comparing yourself to them your results to theirs, your looks to theirs, your success to theirs, etc. So that again gives another dimension to the problem of being self-conscious, of doubting yourself and of doubting what you're capable of. One more thing I can think of is that if you're on a sports team of any sort, it can be, and it probably is, super hard and super challenging trying to compete with everyone else, but also with yourself, trying to be the best you can be. And I guess it can be very difficult to maintain a healthy body image in such a competitive environment. I've never been on a sports team myself, so I cannot really put my two cents in. But I love, love Real Pod by Victoria Brown. She talks about body image and about being an athlete on her podcast. And I love it and I love her so much. So if there's, so if that's something that you can relate to or maybe something that you are currently going through or you are simply interested in that topic, definitely check her Real Pod podcast. So that, as you can see, is a pretty long list of things that change and that stress the hell out of us when we first start studying at the university. And those are just a few examples that I could think of. When things get stressful, when we feel anxious, panicky, when we feel like we're losing control over anything, some of us may tend to seek comfort and sense of control in other areas of our lives or at least in some areas of our lives, food being one of them. And that was exactly my case. I was a pretty good student at high school. I was very dutiful and ambitious. And I'm not saying this to brag about myself or anything, but to paint the picture of how I became the exact opposite of everything I was at high school when I got into the uni. Because when I got into uni, probably for the first time ever, I felt like, what the fuck am I doing? What the hell do I do with my life? And how the fuck do I even take care of myself? I felt really, really lonely during the first one and a half years at the university. I didn't have many friends, if any. I didn't socialize at all. Uh, And if I went anywhere, I went on my own, which felt even more isolating and honestly I think that the isolation and loneliness and being so far from home and from everyone I loved combined with the amount of stress and doubts whether or not I should even be here in the first place made me cling to food even more. Before going to the uni I've recovered from anorexia for a very short period of time and then instead of building an strengthening a healthier relationship with food, I started spiraling into binge eating disorder instead. 
And side note, I also just got into a new relationship and I was so in love and I wanted to spend every single minute with that person and being so far away from them meant I couldn't be with them and that made me feel even worse and even more lonely. I started to reach to food for both control and comfort and it got to a point where it almost felt like I was living two lives at the same time. One part of me was this loving partner, wanted to be a straight aid student, I was trying to restrict my calories, I overexercised. I was trying to reach the ideal body in my head, I was trying to study and pass every exam as soon as I could, and most importantly, I was pretending that everything was fine and that I was not crumbling inside like, like this chocolate cookie or something. And I was pretending that I had everything under control. And then there was the other part of me, which usually came to life right after I get home from uni. And it was the version of me who binged herself to food coma, who procrastinated her days away, who was constantly fighting with her family because of the way she was living her life, and who was acting like someone who couldn't care less about her life or her future. On one hand, having control over food and restricting myself gave me a sense of control over my life. But on the other hand, binge eating and procrastinating took all of that control away. The most exhausting and depressive period of my life has always been the exam period. I am a perfectionist. I was used to being a good student back at high school. And now it was all gone. I was binge eating and procrastinating or thinking about food in one way or another, which took most of my free time. So that made me even more anxious during the exam period. And I didn't know how to cope with that. And during the first few exam periods, I tried to gain all the control back by restricting myself and by losing as much weight as I could. Almost like if having control over my body and my hunger and what I was eating and what I wasn't eating meant I had control over my knowledge and my exam results, which is of course bullshit. It worked for like two semesters, but then then with the beginning of another semester, I was so exhausted, I just couldn't do it all over again. I've lost any kind of motivation to study, which was obviously hurting my performance as well as my self-esteem. I was feeling like a failure all the time and I clinked to food even, even more. Binge eating became my way how to cope with negative emotions and with stress and with feeling like a failure, basically. I didn't see it then, but I do see it now, a few years later, that it was all such a big cry for help. I never fully recovered from anorexia because I never understood why I had it in the first place. And since I didn't know how to cope with difficult situation, food was the only thing that I knew that helped me in the past. So I kept reaching out for more and more food until I developed this binge eating disorder on such a big scale. I didn't really tell many people this, but after the but after the first one and a half years at the university, I've decided to switch to distance learning program, which basically meant I could live back home, I could self-study for the most part, and then I would go to school for like one day a month or something like that. I've told my parents and my boyfriend and my friends it was because I had only two and a half days of school, which was true, and it didn't make much sense for me to ride over 200 kilometers every week just to spend two or three days there and pay pay rent for the dorm and then go back home but the truth is i felt embarrassed and mad with myself for not being able to make make it through uni like quote unquote a normal person but at the same time it really felt like the only option for me to recover from an eating disorder but little did I know that it would get all even worse. Moving back home and studying remotely meant even more isolation and even more space to engage with negative thoughts about myself, my looks and my weight. 
I was binge eating all day, every day. I've spent all my college money on food. I've gained so much weight in a matter of weeks and I was overall really, really unhappy. Somehow I managed to finish my bachelor degree, but it's not a period of my life that I would be the most proud of or that I would even like to think of, mostly because of how unhappy I was, how much I was dealing with every situation in the worst possible way and how scared I was to ask for help. I did ask for help when I started my master's degree because I was so terrified of going through all of that again. Uh, but I but I honestly believe I should have asked for help way, way sooner. But I felt like a failure. I hated myself for not being able to push through like everybody else seemingly could. I hated my body with all the, with all that extra weight I put on. I hated myself for constantly thinking about food. I hated myself for being pain in the ass towards the people I loved. So I felt like I do not deserve to get better. I do not deserve to get help. Also, I have to say it was all enhanced by the fact that I studied a major that I didn't like and that I didn't enjoy and that I knew I don't want to pursue in the future. I wasn't good at it. I didn't like it. But at the same time, I didn't want to just throw away the years that I've kept studying there. And I've mentioned earlier that university is often about performance and we all secretly hope that we'll be the great students and everything will be perfect. And I didn't like my major, so I wasn't really interested in it. I had a hard time forcing myself to study, which caused me even more anxiety. I procrastinated all the time. Which is a paradox. I was studying remotely from home, so I should have had all this free time to study, but I couldn't make myself study because I was binge eating or procrastinating or doing both. And it all made me feel even more miserable. I felt like such a loser and failure for not being able to make myself study and for taking the exams so underprepared. It was this endless cycle of anxiety and guilt and self-loathing. So that's what my uni experience was like. That's why I don't necessarily like to think of that period of my life. And please know that I am not by any means implying that everyone's experience at the uni will be like that. Not at all. I don't think that everyone's different, everyone's circumstances are different. But the reason why I'm sharing this is not to be like, hey, look at how miserable and poor I was. No, I'm sharing this because looking at things now from years apart, I can see how much I was suffering and how quote unquote stupid I was for not doing something about it sooner. I was terrified of admitting that I have a problem. I didn't understand what the fuck was going on and I was so convinced that no one could help me and no one could understand me. Nothing should be more important than your mental health and your physical health. Not the grades, not the social status, not your looks, not the semesters you've already passed. And that's a lesson I should have learned much sooner and I probably would have saved myself a lot of years of my life. I should have done certain things differently and maybe my binge eating disorder wouldn't get so out of control. But it is what it is. I can't change what happened and I can only affect the future. Now that I've talked about why the transition to uni can be challenging and I've shared my experience with an eating disorder at the university, let's talk a little more about the body image at the uni in a little more detail and what are some things that I would have done differently being a university student now. The life at the uni can be all over the place. There's no longer a strict schedule of waking up at the same time every day, going to the same school building from 8 to 4, then going home, doing your homework and being free for the rest of the day. Most of the time, it doesn't work like that. 
and life at the uni can get pretty busy, often being it a perfect excuse for not taking time to eat your food and you know you're running late so you skip your breakfast, so you only grab an apple or on your way, then you have a lecture over lunchtime and then you find another excuse not to eat. I was like that too, but trust me, you have to make time to eat, no matter how busy your schedule gets or how busy your life seems to be, starving yourself is not a solution to anything. You have to eat in order to function, to think, to work and to live. I know it can seem like a low priority compared to hundreds of tasks on your to-do list, but you really have to make time to eat. If you know your schedule for the day is full, then take time to meal prep the day before or make sure you stop at the school canteen at, or at the grocery store to make sure you have some proper meal and snacks at hand. You may not feel hungry, but then you come home after an entire day of not eating and you're gonna be more likely to overeat because your body hasn't got anything to eat. My next thing on the list are unrealistic expectations of what life at the uni is going to be like. I am a millennial woman, Legally Blonde is my all-time favorite movie, and as much as I wish I could be like Elle Woods, I'm not and the life at the uni is definitely not that perfect. When I started studying my master's degree, I became obsessed with watching. I became obsessed with watching Day in the Life as a uni student videos on YouTube. And it can boost your motivation a little bit from time to time. But the more I watched these videos and this content, the more I started to compare myself to those people. They seemed to be a perfect student who was studying at a prestigious university, who had everything under control, who had a social life, social media platform with, with big following and who ran a successful side hustle business and all while keeping a great performance at school. Usually I watched fitness oriented uni student vlogs so it was even more challenging for my self-confidence and body image because I was comparing myself to them. And it's fairly easy to fall for that idea that you're lacking behind if you're not waking up at 5 a.m. every morning and if you're not at the gym every day getting your workout in before the school starts and if you're not running a successful social media business on the side. Those videos often portrayed that person being super productive and how many things they get done in the day, waking up early, going to the gym, going to the classes, writing essays, socializing, all while working on their side hustle. But everyone's journey is different and trust me, Nobody's life is perfect, even if we make it seem so. I've later realized that I'm comparing myself to those people and that it makes me feel like a failure for not being as good as they seem to be. I stopped consuming that content. My point is to, once again, not compare yourself to anybody and to take everything with a grain of salt. Social media sets the bar for unrealistic expectations and sometimes it can be easy to fall for that. My next point is trying to fit in. Trying to fit in is natural. Nobody wants to feel excluded and completely alone. And I think the desire to fit in in a new environment is simply natural. We all want to fit in. What that means is that we often try to do things that everybody else is doing. Sometimes that can be a good thing, other times a not so good thing. The new environment can be a trigger for many of us to change our appearance and maybe play with the idea of losing weight. Your friend or your roommate may be on a new diet or maybe they're talking about their appearance in a negative way, which can then trigger your own self-confidence and your own self-perception and make you feel like you should be on a diet. I know it can be triggering, but just because someone else is engaging in some behavior or in some activities, it doesn't mean that you need to or that you should do that too. I know and understand we all want to make a good impression, we all want to look good and feel good, but hey, there are other healthier ways how to achieve that than by dieting and counting calories and by restricting yourself. 
My uni experience wasn't the best. It wasn't one I would talk about proudly, but if anything, it taught me many incredibly valuable lessons and it taught me that I should have done some things differently. Mainly, I would ask for help much sooner. I remember I've reached out to a university psychologist through an email, but I never ended up going to the therapy simply because I was feeling so ashamed. I didn't understand why I was binge eating, so I thought people wouldn't understand it either and they would think it's not really that much of a big deal and it would only make me feel worse. But who knows, maybe if I had reached out for help back then, I could have saved myself some years of binge eating and of self-loathing. So please, please, please don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't postpone it. it Don't be afraid. Don't feel ashamed. You don't have to deal with everything on your own. I would also try to socialize more and get more from my college experience, which may sound weird following up on everything that I just said, but the more isolated and lonely we feel, the more space we leave to the eating disorder. I would wake up, go to school, come back, stay at the dorm all day, and the only time I would go out would be to either work out or to buy food. And I wouldn't come to any events, any social gatherings, anything. I was at the dorm alone most of my time and it would feel really daunting. It made me, it made the entire college experience even more miserable. And every time I think about that period of my life, I pretty much always think about all the bad things. I wouldn't let get things so out of hand. I've experienced so many moments that I probably felt at my lowest. I was feeling like a failure for not being able to have quote-unquote normal college experience while seemingly everybody else could. All I would think of was food, either what I ate or what I shouldn't have eaten, how much I ate or what I wish I could have eaten or how much weight did I gain or how much weight did I lose. And on top of that, I felt stressed and terrible because I couldn't force myself to study because I hated it and it caused me even more stress and anxiety. And last but not least, I would try to create some sort of structure in all that mess. The school schedule can be all over the place. Some days you may start early, other days you have lectures till the evening. On some days you may not start until early afternoon And on some days you may not have any lectures at all and I know from my own experience that it can be rather challenging to create some sort of system within that schedule. And to really make sure you have enough time to eat, time to study, time to chill, time to work, time to socialize. And for me, being someone who has terrible issues with procrastination, it was really difficult to make sure I really made time for things that matter. Oftentimes, I would use my schedule, which was all over the place, as an excuse for avoiding a lot of things, for bitch eating, for not being able to do what I wanted to do, etc. So the more I let the schedule control me, the more I was searching for control in other places, such as food and procrastination. So that's all I have for you today. That was my roller coaster called the uni life. When you're done listening to this episode, I don't want you to leave thinking this is how it has to be for me. No, no, not at all. I'm sharing this in hopes that it will encourage someone to seek help rather sooner than later because every second we have on this world is extremely valuable and it's such a shame to let the eating disorder take control over our lives. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Fortunately enough, we live in an age where getting help you need is possible. It may seem scary, but seriously, asking for help and seeing a therapist was the best decision I've ever made on my eating disorder journey. And even if you're thinking like, I don't think I have an eating disorder or my problem is not that serious, please don't be afraid to see a therapist or a counselor at your school. It's always better to deal with any problem sooner than later. Maybe you'll figure that you just need someone to talk to or maybe there are other issues going on in your life that you need to take care of. 
Or maybe you find out your problem is much deeper than you thought. But then again, you will be able to deal with it and learn how to cope with your emotions and feeling and your past experience in much healthier way. I know that underneath all that stress from studying and balancing your student life, adulting, social life, and just being, it can seem easier to just push your problems aside and make it seem like the problem just really isn't there and you let yourself believe that you'll just deal with it later. But the problems that are not being solved only get bigger in time. So please don't be afraid to ask for help. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope this episode was helpful in some way. Let me know what you think. You can either write a review of this podcast on Apple Podcasts or you can send me a DM on Instagram at Binge on Self Love. I'll be back next week with another episode. Thank you so much for listening and talk to you soon. Bye! Something inside of me that says, you know, I just have to follow that. Because you don't know.